Hi guys, Nada here and today I'm gonna talk about Nvidia's brand new graphics cards, the RTX 2080 Super Cards. And here we have the Founders Edition as well as the first custom card we got, which is from Gigabyte and this is 2080 Super Gaming OC. Now, this is not a brand new card, uh, it is just a refresh of the previous RTX 2080, which means that they enabled a few more cores, the clock speed is higher, and even though they have the same amount of memory, this memory is actually faster. So, in theory, these guys are supposed to be a few percent uh, faster than the previous RTX 2080, and yeah, they're gonna completely replace the 2080, which is going to be discontinued. So, let's talk about the performance of these cards, thermals, noise, and all those fun little graphs that you guys love so much. Let's go. This video is brought to you by the Cooler Master Masterbox NR400, a quality micro ATX case that offers great performance and a sleek design at a very decent price. Get yours using the links in the description below. Nvidia's Founders Edition design hasn't changed much. It now has a mirror finish in the middle and says Super on it, but that's pretty much it. I don't think that's a bad thing, however, as this card is incredibly well made and looks and feels amazing. What is very different, however, is the positioning of this Founders Edition. With the RTX 2080, the Founders Edition was overclocked and actually priced 100 euros higher than the MSRP. And Nvidia counted on partners to make cheaper options. Unfortunately, those are often really hard to find. But now with the Founders Edition 2080 Super, they're going back to their traditional ways of selling a non-overclocked card at the MSRP of roughly $700 or 740 euros. And they're going to leave it to their board partners to provide the overclocked versions. Now, that means that at MSRP, you're going to be able to buy a decent 2080 Super card. The first OC card we got in is Gigabyte's Gaming OC model which is the same design as we saw a couple of days ago in my review of the RTX 2060 and RTX 2070 Super Gaming OC cards. It has three fans, a fan stop feature, nice backplate, and a design that's very easy to match with most of other components. One thing that Gigabyte does that I think is a big bonus is adding a fourth year warranty when you register your card. So let's talk performance now. Overall, we see the RTX 2080 Super Founders Edition slightly ahead of the MSI RTX 2080 Duke, an overclocked card by the way, since we didn't have an RTX 2080 Founders Edition. Depending on the game and resolution, the difference goes up to 10% actually. Even though it's faster than before, it is clear that the RTX 2080 Super still sits closer to the RTX 2070 Super than the RTX 2080 Ti, which is considerably faster in every game, as the price would suggest as well. It should be considered an upgrade over the RTX 2070 Super for premium Quad HD gaming or a good card for Quad HD Ultra Wide. If you're serious about 4K, however, you will still want all the power you can get from the RTX 2080 Ti. Now, if you're wondering why am I not talking about AMD, well, they literally have nothing that can compete with this card and as far as I can tell, I don't think we're gonna see any competition anytime soon. Looking at thermals and noise after a 30 minute stress test, it is clear that both cards are objectively very good. Neither gets hot or noisy under load. Now Gigabyte's slightly faster card does stay a bit cooler at a tiny bit quieter under load though, so the big three fan solution is clearly more efficient, especially since the power consumption is a bit higher here too. Now here's a very interesting fact, even though Nvidia sells this card as a non-overclock card, due to the way that the Nvidia GPU Boost works, this card actually overclocks itself and does it very nicely, so the difference between these two cards is going to be only a couple of percent, and that's very good news. So this is a high-end card and it's meant for high-end users that do have money to spend on a graphics card, keep in mind it's going to be around 700 euros, that is a lot of money. But with the RTX cards, as I've said before, you do get one, ray tracing, which is a bit, yeah, disappointing because a year later only a few titles actually support it, but it does take time and if you look at the game lineup for next year, there's going to be a lot more games that are going to support it and the list is going to get larger, so that's good news, especially if you're awaiting Cyberpunk 2077 like I am. And the second thing here is the NVIDIA NVENC encoder, which is great for starting streamers because 
especially if you don't have a high-end CPU, because you can have a uh, better stream without losing gaming performance. So that's all good news and what you get if you buy an RTX card. Now, if you already own an RTX card, you don't really need to upgrade. But if you're looking to buy a new graphics card and you were looking at an RTX 2080, then these cards are going to give you a bit more performance for the same price. That being said, the 2080 is getting discontinued, so that means that it might get on discounts in stores, so keep an eye on that, because the difference between a Super and a 2080 is still small, so if you get a very good price, a 2080 is still a very, very good buy. Now, when it comes to the Founders Edition 2080 Super, it performs really well and you can get it at MSRP. But if you're looking at custom cards like the Gigabyte we have here, you can get a card that's actually slightly faster, that stays cooler and it's quieter. And what Gigabyte has, which is very cool, it gives you one year warranty more, which is fantastic if you're spending so much money on a card anyways. So something I value a lot. The only thing that we still need to find out is how much these third party cards are going to cost. Now. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this review and about these new RTX cards. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up, subscribe, and yeah, see you in the next one. Bye!